Good afternoon, friends, and welcome once again to our online organ recital series here at Good Shepherd Episcopal Church. My name is Chris Elkers, and I'm your host, and today we're going to be listening to some music from Spain and Portugal, uh, roughly from the mid-16th through the mid-18th century, kind of the, the golden age of keyboard music in Spain. Now, in history, of course, the golden age in Spain refers to the 16th century, fifth, late 15th into the 16th, the age of exploration and all that stuff. But we're going to be, expand that a little bit and, 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 and broaden what we look at in the way of music. Um, so let's go over to the organ and see what we have today. <clears throat> now, Spain, much like Italy, uh, was a Catholic country at the time, and um, things that were common, commonly used in Northern Europe, like the, or the chorale, the Lutheran chorale, for example, would have been pretty unknown to them. Um, music that composers wrote for the church at this time would have been based either on Gregorian chant um, or you know, improvised quite often to cover an action, a liturgical action that was going on during the Mass. Um, this first piece is by uh, Sebastian Aguilera de Heredia, and um, it is called Salve Regina. Now, Salve Regina is a Gregorian chant, um, and this is like a little fugue based on that chant, and it's, it's, the entire fugue is based just on the first four notes of the chant, and I'll play those for you right now. And as I say, the entire piece is built up around those four notes. This is um, Salve Regina by Sebastian Aguilera de Heredia. <laughs> A setting of the Gregorian chant in fugal form, uh, Salve Regina, by the Spanish composer Sebastian Aguilera de Heredia. Now, living just a generation or so before Sebastian was another famous Spanish keyboard composer, um, Antonio de Cabezon, and um, he lived till about 1566. Uh, he wrote also many, uh, many very learned pieces, many uh, fugues and, and such things, but 
He also wrote some wonderful variations on folk melodies. And um, this one we're going to hear today is called uh, Diferencia Sobra la Gallarda Milanesa, which means variations on the Milanese Galliard, or the Galliard from Milan in Italy. So a little bit of Italian influence going on here. Um, now, this would, music like this wouldn't have been played in the church. This would have been played perhaps at court or, or, or in some sort of a domestic setting on a small keyboard instrument. And what I'm going to try and do is kind of replicate what I think that might have sounded like. This is the variations on the Milanese Galliard by Antonio de Cabezon. Variations on the Milanese Galliard by 16th century Spanish composer Antonio de Cabezon. The next piece I'm going to play for you is by Francisco Correa de Araujo, and this is a piece that's called, it has the rather lengthy title, Tiento de Medio Registro de Dos Tiples de Septimo Tono. Now, we'll get into that a little bit. Um, one of the genius aspects of Spanish organ building at this time was that they made a great deal of use of limited resources. The instruments, by and large, weren't all that large, and uh, quite often just one manual or one keyboard. Now, one way that the builders got around uh, inherent limitations that you would have is to divide the keyboard. That is, to divide it such that the bottom half of the keyboard could play a different sound than the top half of the keyboard, so you don't have the same stop going the entire length. And that's called, that's called a divided register or a divided keyboard. And um, Correa de Araujo, in particular, took great advantage of that and uh, wrote a, a number of pieces that feature um, a melody in accompaniment, perhaps accompaniment in the left hand and melody in the right, or reverse sometimes with the melody in the left hand, um, so that being prominent. The piece I'm going to play to you here uh, for you here today is um, such a piece. It's, it's for divided keyboard, and um, the, it's, it's really two melodies in the right hand and three parts going on in the left hand and pedal. And uh, this is, again, it's called, in English, uh, a piece for the divided keyboard for two soprano voices, or two parts in the treble, by Francisco Correa de Araujo. Thank you. 
the piece for divided keyboard with two melodies in the soprano by early 17th century Spanish composer Francisco Correa de Araujo. The next piece is rather a series of very small short pieces. In addition to large uh, compositions such as the one I played for you, composers at the time also wrote many short little verses which were designed to be either be interspersed with uh, sung verses of psalmody or maybe, you know, played, you know, while communion was wrapping up or whatever the purpose may have been. Um, and these are very short little pieces. This is a set of five little verses and um, they're, they're, just, they're just delightful and they make a great little suite, I think, just, just playing them all on their own without anything else. And uh, the composer is Francisco Villa. There's not a lot known about him. Um, he was a priest in the 18th century. I think that's about all we really know. But these are five verses on the first tone or in D minor, if you wish, by Francisco Villa. Five short verses written for liturgical use by the 18th century Spanish priest Francisco Villa. Our last piece on the program takes us well into the middle of the, seven, of the 18th century, rather, and to the Portuguese composer Carlos Seixas, 
who was uh, heavily influenced by um, Scarlatti, amongst other Italian composers. And at this point, um, he is writing. He is writing in the sonata form, and this is his sonata in C major, written in three movements: allegro, adagio, and concluding with a minuet. Uh, sonata in C major, in C major by the Portuguese composer Carlos Seixas.
the sonata in C major, probably originally written for harpsichord, but um, very, very well suited to the organ, I think, by the Portuguese composer Carlos Seixas. That's it for our program today. I sure thank you for joining us, and I, and I hope you've enjoyed the music. And uh, keep well, and we look forward to seeing you again next week. Thank you.